Hello and welcome to the new episode of the Ambitious Sloth podcast. Today I am with Matt, who is a founder of the Advanced Life Coach Marketing. Com, and he's the author of an ebook, The Wellness Entrepreneur's Guide to Building a Serious Business. And not to forget, he's a philosophy enthusiast. Um, and here is his first question, which is, if a 94-year-old grandma asks you, what do you do to pay for my pension? What would you <laughs> answer so she understands it easily? <laughs> okay. So I would have to tell that 94-year-old, um, and this is not how I would describe it to anyone else, but to her, and this is like a whole marketing thing, because you got to really speak to the person, your target customer, the per, you know, you got to keep that target customer in mind. So for her, I would say um, that I'm an educator, and I actually, uh, I, I teach people um, like how to do marketing and how, and Particularly, I teach life coaches how to do marketing. So I would just say I'm a sort of educator or teacher or professor, or sort of, or, but in a new context. So I use online technologies to do that, and it's becoming you know a new, a new thing to do to teach online. And um, and so yeah, putting it in terms that she would understand, she she obviously knows what a teacher is, and then um, so yeah, putting it in terms that she would understand, um, being a teacher, being an educator. But then obviously, you know, I'm not working for a university. I'm not working for a school. I'm just using like the the internet. Uh, and I would never describe something as an internet at, at, like to anyone like our age. But um, I'm using the internet to teach. And so, um, yeah, I would, try to, I would try to make that seem relevant to that 94-year-old lady. Yeah. Uh, pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is what you do already for living or do you do something something else still yeah so actually i'm um, i'm doing this full time i have just enough income to like to you know like breathe kind of um but um i have a you know a couple two varieties of main offers i have uh an online course that i sell um Uh, which is kind of like a high-end digital marketing course for life coaches. And it's very, very personalized. There's a lot of like personal feedback that I give in that course. Um, you get a very intimate experience when you sign up. So I'll send you like 15 minute video, like teardowns of your website with me recording, um, you know, my thoughts on a particular area of your website that you need feedback on, or I'll record, you know, a 10 minute video of your social media strategy you know, and how your Twitter, um, like performance is doing. And then I'll also like include one-on-one -on -one, like um, you know support support calls where I'll talk to someone and and like uh, walk them through the challenge that they're having and usually that involves defining a a more crisp and clear message. So a lot of life coaches, um, like if you really look at a lot of life coaches, there's a ton out there and there's a, there's more and more coming every day, and a lot of them are really saying pretty much the same thing. They're talking about good values like purpose and, 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 uh, connection and, um, uh, lo, uh, you know, dream job and stuff like that, like stuff that has to do with living your best life. Um, but they don't realize that a lot of them are saying the exact same thing. And in a business, like if every single business is saying the same thing, something is wrong because you don't have a differentiating point and you don't, and there's nothing wrong with these values that are good core um, but you have to have a differentiating point, whether that be something about how your offer or something about your like customer, there's gotta be a unique angle of your, of your business. So I help them really find a, a remarkable angle that, that kind of markets itself and then create a marketing plan that goes along with, with that. So that's one of the offers that I have. And then I also have some done for you clients as well. So, um, and that's paying a large bulk of my income right now, which is like uh, clients that I, that I, um, you know, I actually do things for like Facebook ads or hosting meetups for them or, um, um, managing email and blogs. And so those clients are more hands-on and bigger. Um, but they, they take up more of my time in the, in the sense that I'm actually doing things for them. Uh, but th and th those are also life coaches, psychotherapists. Uh, there's just there's a virtual reality meditation uh, app. There is a self help book publisher. 
So these are all like in the wellness and self-improvement space as well. So like I have that consistency there, there, there's a whole, you know, I'm very focused in the wellness and, uh, self-improvement, um, kind of goal setting space. Oh, so that's, that's, that's yeah. super, super interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. that, that's, that's super specific as well. So for, for Thank me, you. it would be then really interesting how you actually got there in the end. So maybe starting mm-hmm. from. Okay, how yeah. was uh, how have you been in school? Like, how were you the the kid who was already like helping the others to get mm-hmm. better, or try to oh, understand yeah. like yeah, how yeah, did yeah. you get there? Yeah, no, I was not that at all. So I was more like I was I was the person that I'm targeting now. So I, I was more like I studied philosophy in school, and, and it was very much a psychology oriented philosophy. So some, sometimes I say I studied psychology, but I really studied philosophy of mind slash metaphysics slash philosophy of religion. It kind of like goes all over the, the place. Um, um, but I was really, really into my studies. Like I, I, I hated like high school and I hated, um, uh, you know, I wasn't engaged in class at all. It was not interesting to me. I didn't care about grades. Uh, I did just, you know, good enough to get by, but yeah, it wasn't never interesting to me. Um, and then my first philosophy class freshman year, um, that opened up a whole like can of worms, worms for me. And right after like, you know, the first month of that class, that's when like I got super, super intense about <laughs> something awakened to me and I got really, really intense about self-improvement and, um, like reading intensely. I didn't read a book for for um you know out of choice uh, until i was 18 or 19 and then when i turned 18 um i i have not stopped reading since i was 18 so i literally read like one or two books a week and up until then like i didn't read anything at all and i'm talking about you know mostly nonfiction at this point i i, I always say i want to read more fiction um but it's mostly like nonfiction that relates to specific problems that I'm having and then that's geared towards helping me solve those problems. And so I've been doing that since, um, since I was 18, I'm 25, almost 26 now. Um, and, and the, the, my approach has stayed the same. Like I'm very, very proactive and very, very intentional about like solving specific problems that I'm having in my life, but the specific problems have changed. So back in college, I was very focused on high level abstract, like, um, existential stuff. And so I, you know, I, I, I spent a lot of time in college, um, um, trying to craft like a metaphysics of the world. This is going to sound, this is so foreign to, (laughs) to the business world. It's like weird how I, I recently wrote, uh, you know, an article on elephant journal and it's this really popular, like mindfulness and buddhist blog and uh this article got like fifty thousand views and basically i wrote the article it was about it's called why we should not hate marketing uh the harmony of activism and entrepreneurship and in the article I kind of i outline my journey and i say like um you know a lot of my friends would think that i did a 180 i went from philosophy to entrepreneurship and like it's like a total shift in values. Like, what are you like? What are you doing? Those are to- two totally different things. I don't really see them as different things. It's just like different ways. It's it's more like different topics, but they're like the same thing to me, because because uh, they're both about kind of being hyper hyper strategic and systematic about um, you know like outlining a system and way of like in philosophy, it's you're designing a way of life. And then in entrepreneurship, you're designing a business in a really systematic way. So it's just taking all those systems that I learned in philosophy and then like nothing really changed after college. I just simply, my day was the same. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So so you already like went over a whole range of topics right now. So you you, you started started off with, uh, you, you changed to reading almost one or two books a week where my first question is like how do you even do this like okay reading two weeks <laughs> a, two books a week um, yeah it's a little harder then, now it's a little harder okay now. 
but I, okay. it, yeah, like I, I still read it very intensively, uh, intensely. Um, but now it's like, you know, the thing is I have my phone always on me and I read most of my books through my Kindle app on my phone. And a lot of people, mm -hmm. like when I tell them this, they're like, Oh, that's disgusting. Like you, you read on your phone. Um, they want, they want to read a physical book. And honestly, I'm, I'm the same way. Like I, I prefer, like I prefer to read on a physical book as well. But since I'm reading so much, this is just convenience. Like I carry yeah. this around with me everywhere. So if I'm waiting in line, I'm reading. If I'm on the subway, I'm reading. If I'm, you know, if I'm going somewhere, if I'm, if I'm doing something that like, if I'm transitioning, like between the cracks of my day, I like to call it, I'm always reading between the cracks of the day where other people are kind of waiting mm -hmm. around. Um, and then, and then I, and then I have deliberate times. Like at this point, since my schedule is so busy during the workday, um, most of my reading now occurs like in bed at 10 PM or 11 PM. Um, um, but, or, and in addition to that, it'll, it'll happen like, um, between the cracks of the day while I'm on my commute or something like that. Oh, okay. Uh, that's where I'm so, at now. So, so you, yeah optimize your day as much as possible with like reading and using the time really really wisely yes second, absolutely basically yeah yeah but but i but i also don't want to get too crazy about it where i'm like if i'm thinking about optimization for too long um then then that's not optimize you know that's not optimizing and here my dog's barking um <laughs> but <laughs> but so yeah, like I, I need to make sure that I'm also relaxing. And so in a way that's also optimizing by making time for um, not optimizing. And and that's important to me as well. Something that, you know, sometimes I sometimes I get it right, sometimes I don't. Sometimes I have enough time to relax and I really schedule that in, um, that free time. But it can be hard when you're running a business and there's really no boundaries between like what you're passionate about and like your life, like it, it's especially hard. I think when you're, when you're a, a business owner and you're, you know, you're doing everything yourself and you're passionate about what you do, it's hard to know when you actually should shut off. Mm, yeah. And yeah. You, you, you know, <laughs> can do this or like, I, 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 I honestly struggle, uh, to shut off and I, I don't want to get better at that. Um, that's one of my like personal goals is like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, one of the reasons that I'm like, I spend every day kind of testing out new routines and like tweaking my systems and, and, um, you know, making my, making sure my schedule is really, really good. And I'm doing that so I can actually have time, give myself that, that, um, self care time, the, the time that I have off. Um, yeah. you know, the, yeah, there are certain things that I do that are, that are, you know, self care that I, I just, I don't think of it as self-care, but I do it automatically kind of like I work out, I'll work out two to three times a week and, um, that's just something I have to do, you know? Yeah. And, and for me, like, it's not hard for me to work out three times a week on a normal week. Um, but sometimes it can be hard to really like really sit there and relax for, three, for two hours and read a fiction book. You know, I, if I'm there, like sometimes I'll be like, oh, I want to read more nonfiction. And then it's like, it's this whole different psychology between reading nonfiction and fiction. So maybe, yeah. maybe elaborate a bit more on how you really optimize uh, your day or your work. Because I saw a couple of your YouTube videos uh, where you explain oh, nice. like, how you do it already. Um, yeah. Like, how do you keep up with uh, the content you're producing right now? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, I basically have checklists and this is like the number one thing that keeps me in place. Um, and I'm, um, these are systems that I'm optimizing to it's, but it's basically, it's as simple as a checklist. So every day I have a communication checklist and I'm going to pop it open because I don't have it all memorized, but I'm just going to pop it open for my reference. Um, and I have it open right now. And so there's kind of two parts to the day. One part is communication, and then one part is um, content creation. And so in communication, I basically have a checklist of things that I want to do um, each day. And then also it changes by the day of the week. So um, 
you know, communication. I'll reach out to my team, reach out to my clients, reach out to some, uh, some leads, um, do some show, um, focus on some core social media channels, like the most important ones. Um, but then depending on the day, there's also like Monday is, is Pinterest and medium day. So I only really focus on like these lesser, you know, I mean, debatably lesser social media channels on Monday. And then on Tuesday, I'll do some guest posting, pitching, and then podcasting pitching. And then on Wednesday, I'll do the core social media channels plus Reddit and Quora. You know, it's all like kind of optimized where like there's some daily social media channels that I'm focusing on, like the really important ones. And then um, there's some kind of like other other communication related and you know media related promotion related tasks that just happen um, on conditional days. And so you know it's it's hyper kind of idiosyncratic. So it's hard to really describe this and like have you be able to relate to it or anyone be able to relate relate to it because I've just like really optimized this to my to my preferences. But I have that, so the communication checklist in place, and then I also have um, a daily content creation checklist. And right now where that's at is it's um, recording six video, six really short videos a day, um, like simply two minutes of recording my thoughts about like a, a process. It's a process-based video where I'm talking about um, something that I'm thinking about. So it's really, really um, minimal. Uh, like I don't, I don't think about like, I don't script it out. I just simply kind of talk about an issue and be vulnerable when I'm talking about the thing. I'm struggling with this thing. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so, you know, like let's, let's think about today. So today, uh, you know, today I was thinking about, I was thinking a lot about social media analytics today. So, um, and I was confused about like, what are the right analytics to, to track? Like, should I track impressions or should, should I track uh, uh, comments or should I track likes or shares? Like if I'm going to pick one, what's the most important thing to track? Um, and so my video will literally be me talking about this kind of dilemma that I'm having. Like, hey, guys, I'm, um, today I'm thinking about um, social media analytics and, and I'm really like confused about uh, what to track. And, uh, you know, there's so many different social media analytics and it can be overwhelming. And so, and I want to pay attention to one in particular, just so I can be focused about my social media analytics and, uh, so that I can get more results faster. And so literally I just talk through the top of my head. Like that's, that's how I do a video and it doesn't have to be perfect. It's simply like, I, I realize there's actually, it's interesting to watch someone who's not perfect. It's interesting to watch someone who's flawed and doesn't know all the answers. And when I realized that, like I, you know, I realized that, you know, I got this from Gary Vaynerchuk, but he simply records himself just ranting. And I'm like, you know what? He doesn't have a script. He can do it. I can do that, too, in my own idiosyncratic way. I actually uh, heard or know that from uh, Seth Godin, who always like oh, nice. preaches, um, shit before you're ready. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Otherwise, you're just stuck in in the process. And while you do know the like short minute videos, you learn how to how to speak in front of camera, how to react there. Maybe also like just put out your thoughts naturally, and maybe organize it in a in a more easy way for yourself as well. Um, yeah, and totally. not only not only you learn. I at least it was my experience that you learn how to do these things, but it. In meanwhile, it already gives you some more clarity and, and yeah, clearer thoughts when you think about the problem yourself, what you encountered. Yeah. So that's yeah, like it, just win-win like, situations. Yeah, totally. Like it's discovery when you're talking, when you're talking to the camera, literally you, you discover things as you go along. And that's what's exciting about it yeah. is that you don't know what's going to happen. You discover it as you go along. And then, and then what I do is that when I, you know, when I really want to refine and go deeper into what I, what I'm saying, this is the second part of the content creation, like equation, like the checklist that I have. Um, I actually, I actually order, um, you know, I order transcripts of my YouTube videos. I turn them into transcripts. And the thing is you, you speak 150 to 200 words, uh, a minute. 
And, and so, you know, that means five minutes of talking or 10 minutes of talking that's equivalent to a thousand words. And how long does that take? How long, how long does it take you to write, you know, an a thousand word article that could take you three hours. And so if you can do this like 10 minutes, uh, you, you can produce 10 minutes, a thousand words. I'm, obviously you have to edit and like make sure it's readable, but it's really, really efficient, um, to, uh, to get more writing content. If you start with YouTube and then you order transcripts and then you go, you, you know, you, you, you get those transcripts and you, and you start editing those. And then when you edit those, then you can go deeper in and refine like, Oh, this was an interesting idea. Uh, let me add on to this. So, so that's another thing that I do is that I'm, um, ordering transcripts from my YouTube videos and then editing them and going deeper into it. It's like two totally different. It's not totally different, but it's like, what what's said in my transcript like blog posts is different than what i'm saying in my youtube videos because i end up going deeper into certain things and emphasizing things and deleting certain things um so it's really two different sorts of content and two different ways of expressing kind of the same message so in in a day's work i'll have you know six youtube videos and two thousand words of written material um and that feels really productive for, for me. Yeah. Uh, but if I don't have that, so th w there's also, it's either, a, you know, it, there's an either or. So I have to do, my checklist is videos, the, the documentary videos, the six, six documentary videos and the, um, the written content. Um, or I can do an external media appearance which is um, like a guest post or a podcast or a joint venture webinar, or something like what we're doing now um, would count as like a, 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 as it would be able to replace the videos. Um, Cause I, I, you know, I find it more valuable even because uh, it's just this external media, which, which is nice. Oh, okay. so yeah, yeah. Yeah. True. Yeah. That might be even more effective. Uh, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. Like doing things with others, like having getting featured on other channels, um, is, uh, you know, one of the best marketing strategies because you're, you're trading audiences with the per with the person that, uh, you're collaborating with. So, um, yeah, that's something I recommend to all my clients is really, you know, whether in the form of guest post, it's kind of a tier. It's like guest posting, podcasting, uh, radio, um, print, and then TV. And it's like a tier of like, not necessarily how many how much results you'll get, but how credible um, each channel is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also really um, still really interested in what you said in the beginning. What I now like want to go over a bit is how you combine combine the philosophy part that you had in school and wrote your your um, ebook about and yeah, yeah. entrepreneurship like how yeah how does oh, that yeah. combine for you in a sense like okay you you mentioned that the thought process are similar but yeah, yeah. for me it's, it's like totally abstract and the other You're one's right. like super applied <laughs> well it's like the clouds and the dirt you know um it's the it's the hyper abstract and then it's the hyper concrete and yeah. so in philosophy, there's always, you know, this, the philosophy that I was into, uh, was all about reconciling paradox. So you take one side, you take one side, um, you, you take, you know, you take Eastern philosophy and you combine it with Western philosophy and then you put it together and then see like what kind of crazy stuff happens. Or, you know, you take, you take, uh, like I, I would read philosophy at the time that, that related to, um, integrating To, two totally different streams of you know cultures and streams of thought combining them together like it was called integral philosophy it is called integral philosophy and there's different there's different names for it there's different kind of forms of it but that was one of the big themes of the of the philosophy that i was into was actually combining two really really different things and then bringing them together to see what happens and so that that's an idea that was always really interesting to me Uh, but it also goes, there's, there's deeper elements to it as well. So another, like another branch of philosophy I was really into, um, I wasn't really into like 
super academic stuff. I was really into like philosophy as a way of life. I wasn't into philosophy as a like academic system um, unless it could inform how like how I could live my life. So I, the way I approached philosophy was I'm going to study this now so I can design. I never wanted to be a philosopher. I, I was always like, this is the, this is the most high level thing I can study that can, uh, really give me a zoomed out perspective on life so that I can make the smartest decisions about everything that I do afterwards. So I was thinking about it like that. And, and so one of, one of the, like a lot of the existentialist thinkers, you got like Nietzsche and Kierkegaard, um, the themes of these thinkers were you design your own life and, you know, creativity is a creative life is, is the most important life Uh, stuff along the lines of that, where it's you're, you're putting your life, you're putting your life into your control and you're uh, making decisions and you're, uh, you know, determining your life rather than having someone else determine it for you. And you can see some of these ideas are already, you know, very much interrelated with, entrepreneurship in that world they say the same they say the same exact thing um but even so even deeper than that um uh so in the 1920s there was a there was a philosopher his name's alfred north whitehead and he wrote he wrote a book well so he was one of the pioneers in this kind of integral way of thinking and thinking in a global kind of synergistic way where you combine, uh, where you bring together two totally different streams of, of thought. And uh, what I what initially turned me on about this guy was that he wrote about he wrote really really systematically about creativity. So and those those two things are normally like you know they're you know you can be creative and then you can be analytical, and, and people think of these as two totally separate things. Um, and I kind of liked that he brought them together and he wrote about, you know, he had this whole system and, uh, of creativity and then also like putting in the context of the whole entire universe. Uh, he would see, he, he would, he had a metaphysics, what's called a metaphysics for creativity. And that means that he had outlined a theory of the universe that placed creativity as the most important thing and basically seeing the whole universe as a, as a, process of creativity from beginning of time till now and we're continuing to evolve and create but it's like starting with a big bang um it's just a small small creative processes and and you know bringing together disparate things and then that's what we're doing now we're continuing to create things and come and combine uh bring abstract things into concrete things yeah. and yeah i'm getting super abstract right now and and, and yeah, it's no, like no. weird yeah, but it's uh, weird but to I talk see, about like <laughs> you you still want to like approach the entrepreneurship by using the theory of uh, philosophy and like applying it basically. So no, it exactly, is basically the exactly. same thing, but I'm you applying, the one thing yeah. uh yeah, thinks about how to do it and the other one does it. Kind of yes, like exactly, that. Exactly. Exactly. That's exactly true. <laughs> and and so when I was doing philosophy, um you know, like one of the things Alfred North Whitehead said, he says, he says, creativity is taking the abstract and turning it into the concrete. So you have ideas. It starts with ideas and you need these ideas. Um, and it's good to have really good ideas. But then what, how it becomes creative is that it becomes a concrete thing in the world. So like something that's really, really tangible and specific. Um, is, is that also your um, definition of creativity? So just like general, anything you have in mind? And you make something f- visible, physical out of it. This is creativity, or yeah, how would you describe it? it? It's tough. There, like that's one. That's kind of one perspective on the matter. Um, and I think that I, I like. It's it's kind of like I don't really think of like this is the true definition of creativity. It's just more like this is like a tool. This is like a way I can think about it, and it could be useful in in certain contexts. Um, yeah, there, I can. That that's a useful way of thinking about it. Like turning. Turning abstract into concrete could be a really useful way of thinking about it. Another way is it's just simply the invention of novelty, so creating something that's new. Um, you know, another way is 
thinking about it in terms of what what is yeah. what is really your way of of creativity yeah, yeah. because you wrote a lot a lot about it and i, I did went... and i wrote too much yeah. about it exactly uh, what, what would yeah, yeah, you yeah. yourself <laughs> think about it yeah well just to put this in context so i wrote a um a, a ebook on philosophy of creativity and uh um Actually, one of the biggest wins of that ebook was so someone, a professor of economics, used used it in his class. Uh, I didn't write it in any anything to do with business or entrepreneurship, but he used it in his entrepreneurship class and taught my book, which was definitely my most my biggest win oh, wow. of of that. Yeah, which is awesome. I mean, one guy and like he he he's you know I don't know how much he used it, but he probably just like had a quote with like in in one slide. But I was really glad that he did that, and 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 that made me really happy. Um, but yeah, to go back to your question, what is my definition of creativity? Oh man, uh, yeah, I definitely like look. I I definitely like that. I'm going back to that, you know, abstract to concrete thing and making something, bring something into concrete form. There's a couple things I'm doing right now, um, like. I, I try to make time to write to do a little little bit of screenwriting in the morning. So like really, really short screenwriting. Like I, I don't have that much time for it, but five minutes a day. And um you can think about it as like the more the the more um concrete you get, the more real it feels and the more to life it you know it comes. And that's the same thing with business too. Like the more concrete you get, and concrete meaning like you're 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 It starts with a hyper abstract form and then it comes into the world where it's like on Twitter being engaged and retweeted. There's nothing like more, you know, concrete than that. You know, it's like you, you start abstract and you go really concrete to people. And that's where, you know, that's where the creative, that's where the creativity happens is when it actually touches people and it impacts other people. Uh, and that's a big element to it is that creativity has to actually reach other people in order for it to be creative i don't think you, i don't think the creativity should stop with you just writing something or creating something that really doesn't impact because there's a whole it, there's a whole birth to it after it actually reaches a people and then they engage with it and they consume it and they like feel it in their own ways and then they communicate in their own ways and then it you know it's giving birth in all these other ways uh and, and so it's like Yeah, it's that whole it's the whole process. So, so it's then, as I see it, like your um, definition of creativity is more like going from the theory to the practical or like applied stuff and touching people. Like your definition yes. is like it has to uh, have some influence or emotion towards people. Yeah, definitely. And then, and then, what they do with it, they're going to internalize your your creative work. And then they're gonna spit something else out, like out be, from that. So in a way that the creative process keeps going and going, um, and, and so that's why that's why Alfred North Whitehead's philosophy is called process philosophy. And this is the guy that I mainly like. That this is the guy that I analyzed when I was writing my thesis on philosophy of creativity. Um, but it's a process of you know someone creates something. Uh, makes it concrete it reaches other people they internalize it they create something else based on that and it's it just keeps going so it ha it's a social activity for sure it's not an isolated activity oh okay okay yeah at yeah. least from, from from my perspective was you was just like okay a person is creative if they can create something out of almost nothing or their thoughts and do their like um tangible thing out of it But you saying it also is like the whole social part connected to it, right? Yeah, yeah. Because where are your thoughts coming from? Like when you, it, it's not really out of nothing. Because when you create something, you're pulling it from somewhere else. You're pulling the inspiration from somewhere else. And so that's you're 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 taking, you know, I'm taking ideas from from Gary Vaynerchuk, and then I'm internalizing that. And then I'm making it my own and totally, totally reshaping it, reforming it and, and, uh, turning into totally something that it, that's new. And so it's, it's like, it doesn't come from nowhere. Like it's not just coming from, uh, the abstract thoughts that you're having are coming from something real 
concrete in the world. So, mm. uh, yeah. Does that make sense? Like, this is yeah, a whole, yeah. I literally wrote, you know, I wrote so much about this. So I don't know if I'm missing basic points. Um. <laughs> it's, so for me, it's least understandable, I think. But, okay, I'm glad yeah, that's at least something. Yeah, yeah. There's so much that, um, I mean, yeah, I don't even think I can explain it all. Um, but but one, but, one thing is then really um, interesting as well is like, okay, you said you uh, use the philosophy more like uh, as a life um, guide or to, ex to guide your life somewhere. What is then your most important part of it or like which part did you internalize the most? It's like specific mm. philosophy or, or um, what is mm. that? Yeah, I think it was more of a, an attitude and, and, and a way of um, approaching things. And um, so, so when I made this system, so I made my own system for philosophy as a way of, I mean, creativity specifically as a way of life. And so when I wrote this thesis, I was actually outlining a life plan for me. If that makes sense, like how, a how really, does, yeah. How does it look really, like? Exactly. Well, well, that's what I was doing. I was, I was, in a really academic way. I was designing. I was doing life design, and so I wrote this because I wanted to be kind of. I wanted it to be like, a, basically, a, a map and like maybe even like a bible of how I was going to approach my life in the future, and that's what I was doing all the time when I was studying, studying philosophy was that I was just creating little pieces of like, actually like literally like a Bible is, might be the best way to describe it because it's like little aphorisms of wisdom and like uh, systems and guidelines for how I'm going to approach my life and, 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 and what I'm going to do. And so like what's, what has resonated with me now um, uh like everything I feel like has made an impression because you know, I'm, I'm, I like to think of myself as living out what I wrote about in college and what I theorized about in college. And, and right now I'm applying it while there I was theorizing about it. Um, so, you know, I'm doing my entrepreneurship, I'm, I'm building my business and I'm reaching people by doing that. And, um, by doing that, you know, I'm, that's me self actualizing. That's me bringing creativity in the world And by the way, like self-actualizing, which is this psychology concept, uh, and creativity, in my thesis, I also argue that those are the same exact thing. When you're self-actualizing, you're bringing yourself into the world. And when you're being creative, you're also bringing yourself into the world. So it's really the same activity. Um, and so I think when you're building a business, you are doing that. You're self-actualizing, and you are, you know, you're being creative, and you're, you're making something that's really concrete and then impacts people and you know you know mostly creativity and art are associated so people think creative they think art and i think that could be true but i think the art needs to um needs to lead to impact it needs to reach people so in a way you have to treat the art you have to combine art and business because business is about reaching people and reaching you know making impact and then art is about you're creating something about feelings and I, I, I don't even know what art is, but you're creating something, um, <laughs> you know, what, what, how would you define art if we're, if we're going to get philosophical for a second? That is, <laughs> I, I know why, why it's so difficult. So for me, yeah. art is, um, uh, first of all, it's a really personal and perspective wise thing, I would say. Because everything yeah. can be art for one person, it doesn't have to be art for the other person. Yeah. Um, so, I, from my perspective or my myself, see it as something where I can see um, some kind of a beauty or something what draws me emotionally into something or gives me um, just like a change of perspective most of the time. Uh, when I look at it or when I experience it, whatever it might be. So it's in this sense, it's really, really broad. But I see it as, for example, if I just like see um, outside, it's like a weird tree is, is uh, growing in a specific way that looks just like really naturally beautiful. 
that I could mm. sit, could, could consider as art. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't have to be something really specific, but just as anything, what changes a bit your your mood, your perspective, yeah. it gives you something emotionally. Yeah. Yeah, I like that definition and and what you said about beauty. So there's definitely like it ties into that feeling of beauty and that feeling of well, it doesn't have to, but um, I feel like that's the ideal of art is that it has that experience of beauty that comes along with it. Um, and I love art. Like when I talk about art, I'm not talking about paintings. Like I'm talking about every single art medium possible, like, like music and movies and film and, and TV and fiction and, uh, you know, and painting too. But like, it's, I'm, th I'm thinking about it holistically. And so, you know, I, that's another one of my, my interests and my passions is, is, uh, you know, I do screenwriting and I mean, just as a hobby, like literally I told you five minutes a day. Um, but when I'm looking at it, you know, when I'm looking at what I want to do and what I want to accomplish in my life, um, I, I, I want to, A, I want to um, be creative, whether that be through business or art or both. Um, and also through uh, business, I'm also including like nonprofit charitable stuff as well. Um, but whatever it is, I know I, I want to be really, really good. At, and I, at this point, I can say that I am good at that. But I want to be really, really good at making sure that it makes impact in the world. So um, that was something that I wasn't good at when I was in college. I didn't know anything about, like, how do you actually get people aware of what you're doing? And how, and how like, okay, here's a story that can, that can shed, some light, shed some light on this. When I wrote my ebook. Uh, my first ebook in college, uh, which was the philosophy of creativity. Um, I, you know, I just wrote it and like, I, I was just like writing it for, for fun almost. I mean, it was part of, I got college credit for it, but I wrote it. And, uh, after I published it on Amazon, um, I wasn't expecting anyone to read it. And, you know, I released it and, you know, like some people read it, like, I still occasionally get a couple dollars on Amazon Kindle from it, you know, uh, and some of my, you know, friends and family read it, the occasional random person bought it and read it, but it was like very quiet. And, uh, you know, I just like looked and I didn't, at this point, I didn't know what I was going to do after college, but I just like was looking at it and I was like, this, when I create something, I needed to actually cause conversation and like have people talk about it and make and have impact and get people like to really experience it. And I feel like no one, like very few people was, I mean, not, not, not their fault. My, like it was hyper, hyper abstract and theoretical. And like, I didn't want that my life to be just me writing stuff, obscure intellectual stuff that nobody read whether that be fiction or nonfiction. i didn't want that to be my life like i wanted to write i wanted to create things that um would be able to really make impact and like be really digestible and readable and so why, that yeah why is why is that so important for you to yeah. have the difference between creating something and creating something that really impacts people and your environment yeah, well, as I was saying, like in my thesis, like I, I'm talking about um, real creativity is creativity that that has an emotional influence on people. Um, and so, you know, it really it, it doesn't feel like fully alive when you create something and then no one really no one really interacts with it. Uh, it feels alive and it feels meaningful and it feels like rewarding and satisfying when people you know even if they don't like your work if they digest it in some way and and have a reaction to it um so it's really it's really kind of you know zoom if you zoom back it's it's about self-actualization life satisfaction and creating a meaningful life living a meaningful life and and these are like systems and questions that i thought about a lot uh yeah, back when i, I think was, also then with self actualization there's not really the element of um, yeah, the impact or the social environment involved. Uh, but it's still really important for you, right? Yeah, I, I mean, with self actualization it's, you know, the becoming all that you're capable of, of becoming. And yeah. 
Yeah, I always ter- I always interpreted that as um, it, it, impact is part of the equation of that. There's another sure. stage on top of self actualization. So, like, if you read Maslow's earlier stuff, like he talks about self transcendence as being the stage after self actualization, and sometimes he includes this, sometimes he doesn't. But self self transcendence is when you're fully focused on giving to other people and when, and, and uh, you know making more impacts on other people. And it's not selfish impact. It's not like oh, I need to get my name out there. It's it's you're helping as many people as possible and you're delivering value to as many people as possible. Um, and, and so, you know, yeah, to me that that's what self-actualization means, means to me. Uh, and that's a, you know, that that's a concept that's always been really important to me, at least yes. since I discovered it. So to, to really have the impact factor, this is like one of the most important things you need to have in order to like really feel, feel fulfilled uh yeah i mean i, mean, I don't it, it's also like about the journey of that it's not i don't it's not like oh i need to be influential and powerful um it, it's like it's just the kind of like I, i think of my life as um i am a really ambitious person and you i know you are too the name of this <laughs> podcast <laughs> uh and so I want to, you know, have as much impact as I can, but I'm also not like too attached to it where I'm like, I'm going to go crazy. And, 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 you know, I, I, I'm like, I'm not like power hungry and like, uh, that kind of thing, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. But it's also really important to me, but, but it's not, I don't think it's about me either. Like I, I want to help people. Okay. Okay. I mean, it is about so you, me in the sense that that I. <laughs> yeah, that it, it kind of is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It so, is about so, me. You're right. It's it's dude. it's it's like it is about me, and then it, but it's also not about me. <laughs> well, would you say that you could act completely out of the um, notion of just helping the other person without any benefit for yourself so for example you don't have no. even like a dopamine rush when you help somebody and he's happy so like without anything would you would you do it then no yeah no i i can't say that i mean everything everything has a selfish motivation in my opinion so there there's you know there's competing forces like it's not i'm not purely selfish i'm not purely selfless but certainly like Certainly, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and claim that everything I, I do is selflessly motivated. Um, so I, yeah, I certainly think there's you know part of my self that 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 wants that's 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 motivated by this. I mean, surely I, I think having a healthy ego and like a healthy relationship to your ego and a strong ego rather than repressing your ego and like not um, and kind of like shutting yourself off to ambition and like uh self-growth i think that's a lot less healthy than you know that that's uh, that's unhealthy to me and it's more healthy i think the people that have a lot of self-esteem and um are able to express themselves confidently and you know creatively like apply themselves without really being afraid I, I, I admire those people more and, and, I, and I get more value out of them as well. When they, the people have more like self-esteem and confident and expressing themselves. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like, I, yeah. I, I want to see that in someone and I think that's healthy. Um, can, can, would you say you that about yourself as well or like where yeah. are you on this scale? Yeah, no, no. I, I think, I think I'm very confident and I'm very, uh, um, you know, I, I very much am not afraid to do whatever I want to do. So I, you know, I'm organizing my life around everything that I want. So, you know, it's, it's very much in that way. It's self, it's self-centered because I'm designing my life to be what I want it to be. Um, uh, yeah. What was the question? I, I, I feel like <laughs> I'm not sure which tangent we're on right now. <laughs> uh it's it's getting it's getting really deep right now yeah i think so too yeah which is which i'm uh, glad it is I'm glad it is <laughs> yeah it's super super interesting um so maybe you can like 
try to get into uh, shallow water a bit more. Um, again, okay, it's, sounds good. It's, it's sounds already good. like it's 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 getting close to an hour again. So oh, well. um, maybe then like a couple of uh, your um, like ins yeah maybe like insights on how you um, get got started with creating your your ambition your your own life. How did you yeah. um, get there? What you what energy did you have to do this? Yeah, are you talking about like um, building my business, or are you talking about like you like kind of the general. attitude that precur? Okay. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, I'm just trying to think. I'm trying to think back to like that moment of like spark when I I stopped wanting to be like as I told you before. Like I was, I felt like I was sleepwalking through um, my life up until I was like 18. Like, like in, in some way I was not, I was being passive and not proactive. And, uh, I was like, you know, there were hints and glimpses of moments where I would experience more and, and feel like my life could be more meaningful. But I, I mostly felt like, uh, there was something missing and I didn't feel fulfilled like existentially. And, um, yeah, the, the question you asked was, Oh, like how did this start? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like, so, because yeah, because yeah, yeah. Pe people are like really, I guess, wondering how did how did you get from okay, I have a normal life, wandering th through social media, I have my day job, yeah, yeah. and to yeah, okay, now I'm switching completely, creating my life. How how did yeah. this happen? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so I think you know it was just more and more awareness. So I got I got lucky, and well, I mean, I I started out too, so. I, I was unsatisfied existentially and, and like looking for more and wanted to, wanted to have a, like, a, you know, design a better life. And in college, like with the kind of goal that I wanted to, uh, find a better way of life for myself. And so I did that by trying to study psychology and philosophy. And this led to, um, just much, much increased awareness, like really enhancing my self-awareness, enhancing like, uh, my concept of myself, my concept of my life. And so, um, there were a lot of really, really big insights in that first year that helped me realize that like, I need to be really, really intentional about my life and not let like, uh, external factors control me as best as I can. I need to design life to my own. Um, I need to self author my life. And so that really came from studying psychology and philosophy, which was, which was a deliberate choice after I, yeah. you know, it all ties back to that, which was a deliberate choice after, you know, just being unsatisfied. So that unsatisfaction up till I was 18 led to studying that, which after college led to like, what's the most self-authoring thing you can do, um, you can do in the real world, start a business. So kind of right away, um, I... I got my first client, uh, which was like a freelance, I started as a freelance writer actually. Um, I got my first like small client after college. And, and so, you know, I was just starting to do some writing stuff for them. It was like a mindfulness blog. And that led to me needing, I had to learn a lot about online marketing, digital marketing through, um, figuring out how to promote my, my blogs and, um, figuring out how to drive traffic back to their site and then drive them sales. And so a lot of my like initial learning experience about digital marketing came from that. And then I just started to, um, desire more of that kind of, that kind of job and that kind of work. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so more and more I got, I got more clients. Um, uh, and then, uh, mostly in the beginning I was just focused on uh, like kind of any small business and anyone who needed my help. And later on, like, uh, as I took more training courses and did more, you know, read more, I realized that I needed a more specific niche and, uh, to like build my specialty. And that started with my niche was like psychotherapist. Cause I thought that was like what I knew most about in a professional context. Like, like that's what, that's what my interests are translated to professional world. And that didn't really work. Um, because uh, I mean, it okay. kind of worked. Yeah, but but the like basically the first step or the first thing you needed or were necessary to do so was the self awareness through studying psychology. Is that 
Yeah, the, yeah. And that basically like... the, the realization, well, the first step was the dissatisfaction. Like I'm going through my life, I'm sleepwalking through it, I'm not living up to my potential. There's that one Maslow quote, Abraham Maslow quote, it's like, um, uh, I'll get it up here. It's like, whatever a, a man can be, he must be, or something like that. <laughs> whatever man, what a man can be, he must be. And there was something like that that resonated with me a lot when I, when I was like a freshman in college. And, uh, okay. and so, yeah, it, it was just like moments of that where like, I'm unsatisfied and I want to, I want to design something that's a lot more fulfilling. And so that like, just really inquiring to that question of what makes a fulfilling life. Yeah. And then you hold, you heard the whole rest of it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Super, super, super cool quote. And you obviously had it just like right on your, your desktop, right? Or. I, I well, I had it because you you had asked excess, me to at least. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So so maybe now also like it is it is almost an hour what we already this covered now. Yeah, we'll wrap, let's wrap up. Yeah. Wrap up. So, so maybe like going to to the couple of last questions. Um, uh, I usually also want to have like a bit longer questions on like how do you see yourself in five years, but I guess. Try to make it short somehow. Two words. Uh, um, so, like, how do you see team. yourself in five years? And the next one is, how do you see the company, your company, then in like yeah. five years? Yeah, both questions. I'll I'll just answer really quickly. Um, more emphasis on team. So that's my whole answer. But <laughs> yeah, team, like employees, culture. That's what I'm going to be focusing on five years. <laughs> short nice crispy yes uh, yes so uh it was the the quote you just said the the most influential quote or sentence you um heard or was there another one as well that was probably the most powerful one um that kind of awakened me and i mean there's there's so many others too but um um i think that was the one that got the ball rolling in, into everything so whatever man can be he must be yeah exactly yeah. exactly right. yeah um where do you or how do you grow personally through reading books or what do you oh, do yeah. to yeah no for me it's it's a it's both reading and applying it's, it's like it's like a spiral it's like a whole um feedback loop is that i'll read uh, i'll read something that's specifically about a challenge or a goal that i have and then i'll test and apply i'll tweak uh and then i'll reflect on that i'll read some more and then i'll test that so it's just a constant feedback loop of reading and testing and reading and testing and reading and testing oh cool yeah um what does uh the ambitious sloth mean to you and uh in what way do you see yourself related to it yeah well um, I'm extremely ambitious. A, like that's one of the characteristics that I use to define myself is, you know, I'm ambitious. I like to be around ambitious people. Um, I don't like to be around non-ambitious people. And um, <laughs> and then sloth. Sloth, what that means to me is that, like, I, for me, like, I couldn't even, like, do a normal job if I had tried. Like, it, it's, like, <laughs> it's, like, hard. Like, I... I don't think that that's me being lazy, but it's just more like I, it's hard for me to do, even when I've like volunteered on the weekends, like it's hard for me to do like kind of, I don't know how to describe the work, but just work that I'm not like self authoring in a way. So to me, it's just like, uh, I can't do any of that. So I have to do this, you know? So you have to have your own direction, your own yeah, have to thing, have everything to. by yourself created. Yeah, and then the sloth comes when when I when you start to put me in environments. That's when the comedy, the comedy and the sloth comes when like you put me in the environments where I have to do like the more mundane and like uh, that kind of thing. And then it's kind of, and then it just leads to just comedic situations because I'm really incompetent at, at those kinds of things. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then probably like the the last one is, uh, who should contact you and where? Hmm. Okay. Well, 
the answer is definitely if you're a life coach, if you're a health coach, if you're a relationship coach, if you're a career coach, um, you should definitely contact me uh, or sign up for my email list on my website, uh, which is advancedlifecoachmarketing.com, and you'll share the link. Um, and if you do sign up, uh, you'll get a free niche training to uh, really clarify your message and your offer for your life coaching business. And you also get a free ebook for a guide to building a serious wellness business. Um, so those are two things you get right when you sign up. So I really recommend you do. And then I also likely will send you a video consultation as well because I do that to a lot of my subscribers. Just like a video critique of their website. Awesome stuff. Awesome so, stuff. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, this is it awesome. Was, I really enjoyed this. <laughs> it, was, it went really, really deep in the end. Uh, it was really no, cool. I'm glad. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah, we'll get deeper. Next time we'll, we'll, we'll go into the ego. We'll go into depth psychology. I don't yeah. mind sharing yeah, insecurities or vulnerabilities. So Yeah, maybe ne next time we can really go hard on these topics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we'll talk philosophy. Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. Let's let's do that next time. Sounds cool. good. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Thanks very much for having me. This was great. I uh, really look forward to, to hearing the finished product. Yeah. See you soon. Bye. See you, dude.